Hello everyone, I'm Red Team Beaver and welcome back to day 23 of the Advanced Cyber 3 by TrackMe. Today's challenge is all about log analysis. And I'm not an expert in log analysis, but I had to do some uh, back in the days. Well, especially when I was in school, uh, we had to analyze some logs for a class, basically. And log analysis is quite interesting. Um, a lot of people don't enjoy it so much, but I don't mind it. I think it's cool to see uh, what was happening on the system and understand what is going on. And as pen testers or red teamers, understanding how logs are generated can be a great asset to have in your arsenal simply because you'll be more aware of the impacts you're having on the uh, remote system. For example, if you add a new user, well, there's gonna be a log about that. And if you delete logs, there's gonna be logs about that. So this way, uh, knowing how logs work, at least like on a very high level, you'll be able to implement techniques, I guess, in your um, pen testing methodology to either avoid logs or at least know what's going on, right? So let's dive right into it. So <clears throat> today we'll be analyzing logs from PowerShell and as it's written here, uh, PowerShell is a cross-platform task automation solution. It's basically a scripting language uh, and I know that PowerShell experts will hate me for saying that because it's, I guess, more than that, but um, yeah. It's uh, it's very powerful. It's uh, very powerful. Some malware are even written in PowerShell uh, because, well, it runs on uh, Windows by default, I guess. I'm not sure about what I'm saying right now, so I shouldn't talk about that. So what we'll be doing today is we'll analyze PowerShell logs, especially the event IDs of uh, 4103 and 4104. Now, uh, we'll usually use the event viewer. That's what I used to do when I was in school, but apparently they have a full event log view, which is a new tool for log viewing. Um, so this is how it's going to need to be set up. I'll refer back to it whenever we go to the practical part, which should be right now. So make sure that you start the VM as always. And once the VM is started, I would suggest that you connect to the VPN. Now you can use the split view. Uh, like we did in the past days to complete this task. However, I was having issues connecting. Uh, THM had some problems with uh, their split view, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure how it works in the on the back end, but uh, connecting via RDP works. So in order to connect via RDP, you need to be uh, connected to the VPN. So once you are connected to the VPN, uh, we can launch Remina. If you don't know about Remina, I actually uh, showed you how to install it in the past videos. I'll link it in the top right corner. So go watch that if you uh, are unsure about what I'm doing right now. So what we'll do is we'll add a new um, profile again, and I'll call it day 23 because it's day 23. Let's grab the IP address of our machine. Let's grab the username. And finally, let's grab the password. Once it's done, save and connect. And boom, we are inside the Windows machine. Let's put it on full screen. And if you remember, we can simply do toggle dynamic resolution update. And this way we'll get a nice um, dynamic resolution. So what they tell us to do oops, is basically to uh, go into full, log, full event log and set up like this. So let's go into full event log. Let's find the application. And now we are inside. So now it's gonna take a bit of time to load. As you can see, whenever it's loading, you can see it on the bottom left. So let's go here to the advanced options and set it up like they want. So let's first switch show only events from the last blah, blah, blah to uh, show only events in the specified range. And they tell us to do it about on the 10th and to the yeah 12th, I think is good. Yeah, because I think it's happening on the 11th, so it doesn't matter too much. All right, so now we need to do 4103, 4104, and we need to select only the PowerShell uh, providers log. So let's go here. Let's only show show only the specified event IDs of 4103, comma 
4104. Don't put a space in between. I'm not sure if it's gonna change anything, but this is comma delimited list, so I wouldn't put a space in there if I were you. Next, let's only pro select power, the provider of PowerShell. Great. So now it's set up like they want it, and if we need it, we can also select HTTP um, down the line. So let's answer the first questions. Oh no, the first question is already answered, and that's because I had a very bad time looking for it. So and I was just messing around and trying to find the right answer. And I figured it out. And basically, what we need to do now is understand what command was run by Health McNeely, which we can see right here. We need to find what command Health McNeely ran in order to create a new user, to, to add a new user to the machine. Now, if you look at the hint, it tells you to research this CV, right? So what I did was I Googled, uh, so this CV, so this, and I looked for POX. Now there was a couple of POX that I looked at, but what stood out was when I looked at uh, GitHub only, right? So that's basic uh, Google lurking. And if you want to know more about Google lurking, let me know in the comments below and I will see if I can make a video about it. Ooh plugging uh, future videos maybe. So what I looked for was a print nightmare uh, local privilege escalation in PowerShell. Now, clicking on this would actually lead me to this website, which you saw maybe um, before on top of my screen, you were like, oh, what is this? I wonder, well, now you know. So if you look at the authors of the script, you see that John Hammond is in there. And John Hammond, if you don't know, is a very popular cybersecurity related YouTuber and is actually involved in making the uh, Advent of Cyber 3. So this is him. So you may know his face. Um, all right. So what we need basically is to understand what common was ran by uh, Elf Kitty whenever he got hacked. So we see that here doing invoke nightmare will had a local user named admin with a one instead of high, which is a member of local admin groups, right? So basically invoke nightmare is the answer here, right? So with this in mind, let's go to the question two. So what user executed a PowerShell file to send a password.txt file from the administrator's desktop to a remote server? So we, know, we see a very specific um, file name right here. So let's try to look for it, right? So let's go into our advanced options. Let's show only events that have the specified description and that contains password.txt, right? The stars are wildcards, right? For anything, right? So we just are looking for strings that contain these elements, right? So let's look for it. And now we see that we have three outputs, right? So the first output is a script block, which is probably what we're looking for. Then there's some information about what happened. And then there's a about, there's a uh, command about deleting the password.txt file. So let's look at the first block, right? So the question is who executed the this? So let's just first validate that the user, and in this case, the user is admin with a one right here. Well, let's just make sure that he actually he or she actually extracted the information. So let's look at what happened here. Let's get this bigger. So basically it's getting the content of the password.txt file, right? And it's putting that content into the file variable. Then it's using a key of this. And then it's basically gonna, I guess, encrypt um, the, every character that was contained inside the password.txt file. And now, Doing all of this, the encrypted data will be shipped off in a post request to this um, IP address. So who executed the PowerShell file? Well, it's admin, right? As we saw. And now what was the IP address? Well, the IP address is this, but instead of a colon, we need to put a comma. Great, so two questions in one. So what was the encryption key used to encrypt the contents of the text file sent to the remote server. Now we are actually seeing it right here, right? So the key variable is this. So let's grab this. Great. So what application was used to delete the password.txt file? Good. So we see that there's a delete 
um, call here, but we can also see it here, right? So we see that sdelete.exe was used to delete this file, the password.txt file. So it's sdelete.exe. And what is the timestamp? Um, the logs that show the password.txt file was deleted. Well, now we need to put our terminal a bit, well, not terminal, but our website a bit smaller. And we need to copy this, right? So it's 11 slash 11 slash 2021, so 11th of November, and then 729. I'm not sure how timely I need to do it. So 2021, and then I need yeah, to put the final, what is this? Oh, it's PM. There you go. Good. So what were the contents of the deleted password uh, file? So what we can look at now, if we put this back into full screen mode, is actually at the decryptor um, script that's going on right now. So this decryptor script will ask us to enter the key and to enter the encrypted text here. So we have the key, but we haven't found yet the text, the encrypted text that was posted, right? So let's look for the key first. Oops, uh, it's right here. So let's go grab the key so we don't lose it. One step at a time. So grab the key, go in the notepad and paste it here. Save it by control, pressing control S. And now we can look for the encrypted text here. So if you remember, we said that the um, encrypted data was sent to this IP address in a post request. So can we look for this post request? Well, maybe. So let's go into advanced settings. And remember when we mentioned about HTTP, right? So let's look for HTTP and maybe even keep the password.txt file in there. I'm not sure if it's gonna do something, but let's try it. All right, so we see that here we are grabbing the malicious script. Then here, that's still the same thing. Now we are invoking nightmare and now this is our request, right? So this is a request that we sent, right? This is a script we were analyzing before. So here is our invoke web request. So that's the, so this log here is actually this command here. So let's look at the log here and we set the body as a value of whatever is this. So let's copy this and let's put it into the encrypted text here. Let's put the, co um, the quote again and then let's press control S to save it. Don't put any like new lines in there. I'm not sure if it's gonna work properly. So this is a PowerShell, if I were to, hold up. So this is a PowerShell script. So if I were to show you the extensions, we'll actually see that this is uh, decryptor.ps1. So can I, I can right click it and run it with PowerShell. However, if we wanted to uh, take the longer route, we could go into uh, the PowerShell terminal and we could CD to desktop and then we could do uh, dot backslash and then decryptor.ps1. Do doing so will give us mission control, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I'll need the mission control as well. So let's grab everything. And so just like that, guys, you have completed the log analysis part of the of this Advent of Cyber 3 challenge. So let's go to the outro right, right away. Thank you all so much for watching day 23 of the Advent of Cyber 3 by Trackme. So this challenge was fun. Uh, we had like looking at logs always feels special. You, you get to see the stuff you shouldn't be seeing. And everything is logged, right? And so that's a 
as I mentioned previously in the video, it's always a good skill as a Pentest or a Red Teamer, um, and especially as a Blue Teamer, but I'm not talking about the Blue Team here. But as a pen Penetration Tester or as a Red Teamer, it's good to know what's happening whenever you run commands, right? And that's why you shouldn't be running anything blindly. You should always know what's going on so you can know what kind of impact you have, either in the logs or on the underlying system, especially on the underlying system. But still, if your goal is stealth, knowing what goes into the logs about what you do is important. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it and subscribe. It does help me a lot. And if you subscribe, you'll be able to keep up with my future projects. Um, I've had some requests in the past about making, for example, an Nmap video and basically how I use Nmap and I will probably do that early January. So give it a couple of weeks and it should be out there. And I still intend on doing more uh, walkthroughs and etc. So uh, subscribe. And yeah, if you want to support me, the links are in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for day 24, which is Christmas Eve. Bye bye.